Welcome to my recap of Brazen, a thriller about a woman who is forced to take drastic action to solve her sister's murder. Enjoy. Desiree is a webcam model who specializes in dominatrix-style fantasies, broadcasting from an elaborate set in her home. After another successful session, she padlocks the room and leaves. Meanwhile, Grace Miller, a successful murder mystery novelist, reads her newest book to an enthralled crowd. A surprise phone call sends her immediately to the airport. Somebody needs her help. Grace arrives at the Washington, D.C. home of Kathleen, her sister, and also the woman behind Desiree. Kathleen lives alone in their family home, and Grace remarks that little has changed. Kathleen is in a custody battle with her ex-husband over their young son, Kevin. During their marriage, Kathleen was addicted to pills, and when she asked for a divorce, her husband wouldn't let her take Kevin. She has since kicked the pills and now teaches English and drama at a local high school. Her husband Jonathan is wealthy and well-connected, but Kathleen is determined to win custody of her son. In a nearby gas station, a man is buying tea when a robber holds up the clerk at gunpoint. Pretending to drop his wallet, a man gets a jump on the robber. This man is Detective Ed Jennings of the DC Police. His partner, Ben, admonishes him for getting involved when it's almost his vacation. Meanwhile, Kathleen and Grace are talking at the dining table about how Kathleen could win her custody battle. She has decided to refinance the family home to pay for her legal fees, and she has proof that Jonathan has been stealing from the family trust. She hopes to blackmail him into giving her custody of Kevin. Grace is angry that Kathleen is considering blackmail and leaves the table but later comforts her crying sister. The next morning, after Kathleen leaves for work, Grace hears construction work being done in the neighbor's yard. Ed Jennings lives next door and has just begun his vacation by working on his home renovation. When Grace goes out in the yard to talk to him, they have instant chemistry and plan a date for that night. At the high school, Kathleen teaches Hamlet to her English class. Her students like her, but she has concerns that one boy, Rand, has been having difficulties lately, as he seems cold and distant. On her way home, Kathleen talks with Grace on the phone, who, having seen the padlocked room, asks if Kathleen has built a safe room. Kathleen avoids the question. At home, she FaceTimes her son, but her ex-husband quickly ends the conversation. While preparing dinner, Kathleen gets a phone call that there is a request for her to perform as Desiree tonight, with a gun as a prop. That night, as she is performing, a masked man breaks into the house. On the date, Grace and Ed lay out a homicide for the plot of her next novel and are really hitting it off. He takes her back to his house to show her some of his renovation plans, and they kiss. Grace returns next door and immediately finds Kathleen dead on her bedroom floor, with the padlocked door open. Grace runs out of the house screaming, and Ed rushes to comfort her. He goes to investigate the murder scene and confirms that Kathleen is dead. First on the scene, Ed takes the case, despite being on vacation. His partner, Ben, brings Grace in for questioning. Grace tells the police that Kathleen's ex, Jonathan, is a likely suspect due to their ongoing custody battle and Kathleen possessing potential evidence of Jonathan's fraud. The police in turn tell Grace that her sister was working for a company called Fantasy Inc. that specialized in high-scale webcam shows. With the home a crime scene, Grace spends the night on Ed's couch, with Ed curled up in a chair close by. The next morning, there are reporters on the front lawn. Grace is concerned they might find out about Kathleen's secret room and Fantasy Inc. Ed walks Grace through what they know about the crime. The murderer broke through the back door, was careful not to leave any evidence, and didn't steal anything. Kathleen had just run the shower after her performance, but she never got in. The detectives visit the offices of Fantasy Inc. They ask to see the list of subscribers. The owner assures them that it is a family business and only they know the identity of the performers. Meanwhile, Grace visits the high school. The principal shows her Kathleen's classroom and several students come to pay their respects to Grace and express how much they will miss Miss Breezewood. The principal brings Grace a box of Kathleen's possessions and Grace finds an envelope marked confidential that contains a non-disclosure agreement. Outside the school, a student approaches Grace. He is Gerald Baxter, the son of a senator from Missouri. 
He wants Grace to know he witnessed Miss Breezewood having a heated discussion with Billy Sachs, the school maintenance man. Gerald heard Kathleen tell Billy, don't tell anyone, and he is concerned Billy might be involved in the murder. Grace goes to talk to Billy. He is quick to tell her that he knew about Desiree because his cousin Richie works for Fantasy Inc. doing IT work, and showed Billy a video of Desiree. Grace brings the evidence of Jonathan's fraud to Ed and tells him what she learned about Billy and Richie. She is annoyed that he doesn't share everything he knows, but he says he wants to keep her safe. The detectives go to visit Richie. He lives in his mom's basement and she is quick to assume his guilt, but he denies any involvement in the murder. Another Fantasy Inc. performer called Roxanne is doing her webcam show when a masked man breaks into her house. He has size 11 shoes, just like the first murderer. He kills this performer as well, a woman named Carol Hayes. Grace goes to visit Jonathan to tell him not to come to the funeral. He tells her he knows about Desiree's webcam work and calls her a dead hooker. Grace punches him and he tells her he will come to pay his respects and play the grieving husband. Grace gives the eulogy at the funeral, remembering how well her sister was loved. Many of the students are in attendance, as well as Jonathan. After the funeral, he and Grace fight again. She is sure he is involved in the murder. The detectives and Grace confer. She tells them that Jonathan knew about Kathleen and Fantasy Inc. No longer a crime scene, Grace returns to the house. Going through the cards from the funeral, she finds a handwritten note. Desiree, now you are where you belong. Grace brings the note to the police station. She demands a meeting with the police captain and says that she needs to help with the investigation. Grace has an instinct for motive. It is why her novels are so well loved. The police love her writing, but are hesitant to let her help solve the crime. A video arrives with a recording of the murder of Carol Hayes. The murderer can be heard saying Desiree as he strangles Carol. Grace points out differences in the staging of the two murders. The captain recognizes that Grace could be of help and lets her assist the detectives. Grace and the detectives find the man who sent the flowers and the note, Paul Morgan. Morgan denies sending the flowers and the detectives quickly figure out that they were sent by his son, Rand. Rand was one of Kathleen's students, the one she thought was having difficulties. Rand left the Kennedy Center alone the night of Kathleen's murder. He wears a size 11 shoe. A third Fantasy Inc. performer is attacked in her home. The intruder has a conspicuous gold watch. She manages to wound the intruder's arm with a knife, and she survives, as her family comes home early. She tells the police that he was strong and seemed like a teenager. He also was muttering, Desiree. The detectives obtain a search warrant for the Morgan family home. They find a watch matching the description, and Rand has a bandaged wound on his arm. The police arrest Rand for the murders. Grace goes to talk to Billy, the school maintenance man. He tells her that Rand and his cousin Ricky were secret lovers. Grace pieces together that Rand's lack of alibi was due to hiding his secret relationship with Ricky. The police discover that the blood on the third victim's knife is not Rand's, confirming that Grace was right. Rand is not the killer. He was only suspicious because he was covering up the secret relationship. Grace visits Fantasy Inc. to study tapes of Desiree looking for clues. Returning to Ed's house, he tells her he doesn't want her to get hurt as he is falling for her. They spend the night together. The next day at the police station, Grace decides she wants to use herself as bait to get the killer. Ed is upset that she's putting herself in danger, but the captain agrees to it. That night, Grace dresses up as Desiree and starts her camera. The police are present and have the whole house on surveillance, but the killer doesn't come. Thinking the second and third crimes were copycats, the police question Kathleen's students. Later, in the locker room, Gerald is cruelly teasing Rand, and Rand retaliates by accusing Gerald of the murders. Gerald goes into a berserker rage and brutally attacks Rand, screaming, My Kathleen! Grace suits up in her Desiree outfit for another night of baiting the murderer. The detectives visit Rand in the hospital. He tells them about the things Gerald was screaming. Knowing that Gerald had an intense connection to Kathleen, the police determine Gerald is their main suspect and move to apprehend him. 
leaving Grace at home without her police protection. The police arrive at the senator's home, but when they break into Gerald's room, he is gone. It is apparent that he has been watching Desiree's feed. A masked Gerald appears at the house, ready to murder the new Desiree. He and Grace struggle, and she manages to get her gun out, but it slides under the bed. Grace tricks Gerald into confessing to the murders on the webcam feed. He attacks Grace and tells her she's going to die. But having seen the feed on the webcam, Ed arrives just in time. Gerald attempts to shoot Ed with Grace's gun, but Ed shoots first and takes Gerald out. Later, Grace and Ed sit together on the couch drinking tea and think about a future together. Thank you for watching this recap. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more. Thank you for watching, and see you on the next one.